Hey, everybody. What's going on? Rob Cicerino back, and we have such a treat for you. Apuya, are you ready for this? How are you? I am so ready. I'm pumped. Can't wait. It's going to be a good one. Okay, because we have here with us, I, in my opinion, the person who had this all figured out, it seems like I can't wait to talk to the queen. Sandra Diaz Twine is here. Could have been a three-time winner. We were this close, Sandra. Trust me, nobody was more heartbroken than me. Yes. I almost wanted to cry. I know my chin was doing a little jiggling, and I was like, they got me. And I yeah. was always at the end, like, damn. Uh, but I know where I messed up, but we're going to sort that all out. We'll talk it through. Okay, Sandra, how are you? I'm doing fabulous. I'm a little bit sick. Um, I came from LA. We were invited to brunch at the Oscars. It was uh, Janelle, Peter, and then uh, Phaedra and MJ. And yeah. we had such a blast. And then my flight out of LA got delayed twice. So by the time I landed in Atlanta, Ooh. my plane was gone. And uh, so I had to spend the night there. And then they couldn't confirm me until the next evening. So I was not happy. Yeah. And uh, I'm congested. Okay. Well, sorry you had to deal with all of that. But I saw the videos of you at the Oscar parties. Do you run into any famous people, Sandra? Yes. Rob Lowe. Pa oh. Paul Abdul. Um, and then there was a lot of people there that other people were taking pictures with. But I didn't know them. Like, I know a lot of housewives were there. But I don't know the housewives. So, um, but there was a lot of people doing red carpet and the fans are asking for autographs and I didn't know who they were. You're I'm not an honorary housewife now. No, I'm not an honorary. I feel housewife. like you're in good with them. No, I'm just good with Phaedra and Sheree, but that's it. And Tamra. I yeah. don't have no issues with Tamra. Okay. All right. Well, we're so excited to have you here because uh, Puya and I all season long with us, we got to talk to Sandra and find out exactly because it seems like I, I, I've seen some other interviews you've done. And I, I feel like that the reason why we we didn't get to see even more of you is that I feel like that you you knew too much and they, it would ruin the show if they showed uh, you talking about how much stuff you knew. Sometimes I wonder that because I did know quite a bit, but I didn't know everything. Like you're giving me way too much credit or you trying to play me and be no, I, no, <laughs> no I, so like, yeah, I guess let's, let's just talk about uh, the end. And then I'd love to just sort of like go back through uh, the beginning. Cause it was such a, a blind side when we tried to figure out how this finale was going to go. We really thought that you were going to uh, be there in, in the end. Uh, how, how big of a surprise was it for you? that you ultimately end up getting banished at the last banishment ceremony. It was crazy because on our way to and from the mission, I was in the car with MJ and Trishel. And all I knew was that we were going to vote out Kate first at the round table. Mm -hmm. And then Trishel had kept saying, uh, CT's a traitor. I know he's a traitor. I know he's a traitor. So CT was going to be next. So it was going to be me, Trishel, and MJ, and we were going to split this money, and we were going to ride into the sunset, and we were going to all be happy. That's all I knew. Yeah. And then... We Kate come back from the mission. We find out we're going into a banishment. Um, I finally get a second to talk to Kate, and I'm like, Kate, where's your head? Where's your head at? Because I just want to know where her head was at, because, you know, we're planning on banishing her finally at this round table. And she says to me, well, you know, uh, CT was throwing your name the whole way to and from the mission. And that's when I think I went into preservation mode. Like, wait a minute, if you want to, if he wants to get rid of me, I would be willing to help you get rid of him. Because for me, she was about to go at that banishment. Um, but I was willing to put CT in front of her. Yeah. And I think when CT found out, because as I finished talking to Kate, she got up, went straight to CT. He said a cuss word down the hallway. And I was like, crap, like I'm trying to use a good word. Um, I know I probably dropped some F-bombs. I was like, she just finished telling him, Sandra just threw your name out. That's mm -hmm. I'm almost sure that happened. And I was like, I want to talk to CT. And they're like, no, you can't. Banishment's about to happen in less than a minute. You're about to walk. And that was it. She got the last word. We were walking. 
and we went in there. But when me and her were in there, I actually forgot until she mentioned it to me that just like the pool table scenario, we went in the armory and I was using the coins. There was a chest full of little coins, some of them fake, some of them real. And I laid out a scenario for her. I was like, okay, hey, everyone's on to you. We know you're a trader, but you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. let's get rid of CT. I can help you do this. And then we'll move forward in the game. Can I ask you a question about just that, that you wanted to talk to CT. They said that they wouldn't let you. Do you feel like in any way that they're like, hey, we can't let Kate get voted out here because she's the last trader. We don't have a show if, you know, if there's no traders that make it to the fire of truth. Do you feel like that they were maybe looking out for Kate? Um, possibly, but it hadn't come to, I mean, until you mentioned it now, I really hadn't thought about it. Um, but Kate was going to go. We knew Kate was a traitor. Somebody murdered Sheree. Mm -hmm. It wasn't me. I knew 1000%. I never questioned Trishelle being a traitor. I never questioned, uh, um, uh, MJ being a traitor. The only other person was CT simply because Trishelle kept telling me, I think CT's a traitor. And then it kind of made sense simply because all the big guys were gone and they had brought that up. Like CT, you could be the traitor. You could have been the one taking out all the big guys, including bananas, you know? And like Trishelle said in her interviews, I would sit there and say, I think, you know, when Dan and Parvati got voted out, I was like, uh, Dan and Parvati had to have been my trader angels. Like they had to have been looking out for me and Phaedra has to still be looking out for me. And you must have a trader angel, Trishelle, because how do you go into these banishment tables guns blazing, no uh, filter, and you still survive freaking murders. It's a good question. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, it's one of those things where like, of course she should be looking at CT at that point because you have to look at your closest ally because how else am I still here doing all the things I'm doing? And she said in one of her interviews um, that when he didn't, like after the fact that he didn't like her tour, she was like, because he knows I'm not going home. Like after she survived the torch ceremony, the, the murder that night, she was like, maybe CT is taking care of me because, uh, and this is all here. So she said on her interviews that she thought CT didn't light her torch. Yeah. She cried about it, but then she yeah. survived the murder. So he had to be looking out for her. And then he allowed her to get a shield when we were in the cabin in the woods. Yeah. We question everything out there. Everything, everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just think that your game, the way you play these shows, I think is so perfect. I know you wanted to be a trader, but the way that you play these shows, I think is so perfect for being the ideal faithful because you're not, you're not, you're keeping your head down. You're not making anybody mad where they want to kill you. You're not standing out too much. You're getting in good with everybody. And so like, I feel like that you are just uh, the perfect person to be in the faithful. Thank you so much. Um, Puya, yes. I also watched as many trader seasons as I could New Zealand, Australia, the UK. Haven't watched Canada yet. I don't think it was out there when I actually went to film or I would have done my homework. I'm not sure. Um, but I, I try and I watched them twice. So I try and, and I kept thinking to myself, hmm, I think the best way for me to play this game is to not say too much at the round table, which I had to reel myself back in after trying to go after Max because me and Deontay went after Max more than they showed mm -hmm. um, at the round table after Pe Peppermint went home. But I was just like, I think that the winning strategy is to be friends with the trader. And that's why I started saying trader angel, trader angel. And then I'm going through the whole season. And I'm like, what the hell? I know I was saying trader angel every damn day. Why am I not seeing this on TV? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I tried to do my homework. <clears throat> and I and I think to, to what Rob said, I do feel like because of how much you have clearly figured the game out and you're using verbiage like Trader Angel, they still want it to be a murder mystery party the way they're editing it. They don't want to peel back the curtain and be like, all right, well, I'm I know there's three traders. I think they were all protecting me. Two of them are gone. This one's still here protecting me. I think they don't want us to see all that. And then that's why these interviews have really come in clutch because we're able to get that peel peek behind the curtain and everything. And, and to what Rob said, uh, Sandra, he's not wrong. I think that you not only did the Trader Angel strat, but 
to me, the most impressive part was how many people you worked over with your social game um, going as early back as when Larsa was being looked at and you were working the housewives. You were trying to, you know, mingle with this new group that you hadn't really had any knowledge of beforehand. And I feel like not a lot of people were able to do what you did. Mm hmm. Well, thank you. I'd like to say that I think I'm a social butterfly, although I'm a Leo. My daughter <laughs> says I'm fire, fire, whatever those signs are. Right. I'm a leader, not a follower. Um, but when it comes to talking money, I knew, hey, the longer I last, the more I'm a gift. So I need to stay in this damn thing till the yeah. end if I can. And if not the end, as close to it as possible, you know? Yeah. So. You know, something you did over the course of the season really changed the way that I even look at the game. And I'm not like you and Puya. I haven't seen every single season. I've only seen the, the U.S. seasons. But you had a post where you you posted, I think, on your Instagram, which it, it's a it, that Sandra should have more Instagram followers. That yes, I, right. I only have 80,000 plus. Come on. Where am I? You know, come on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't even need to get into how many like some of these housewives have who are not nearly as entertaining. Millions. They have millions. All <laughs> them housewives have a million plus. So yeah. we're not going to go there. But they've been, hey, they've been housewives for like 10 years. Okay. Something. Which I've been a housewife for thirty years. I'm going on. <laughs> so I'm. I obviously got the uh the you know. I'm, yeah. I'm and who keeps it more real than you? Mm hmm. Yeah. But you you posted with the pool balls and you talked about how like hey yeah we're looking for traders, but these faithful have to go home too, and I just I never thought of this game that way that yeah you you I gotta get rid of all the faithful that I don't like also. Absolutely. I mean. Peter shutting the door or whoever was shutting the door like that was perfect. It was all I needed to get a bunch of people together and let's like stick at least to a couple of banishments together because here's the issue. Every single round table, there was always rogue votes. There's always those few like MJ. I don't want to vote with the herd. I don't know. No, 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 no. I'm my own person. But listen, guys, we need to. You know, if we're going to target a specific person or go after a specific trader, we need to have the numbers, you know. Um, so the pool tables, like when Peter and the Peter Pals, which I would call them the most faithful of the faithful. I didn't know them as the Peter Pals. We no one else in the house. We just kept saying the most faithful of the faithful because they're claiming to be more faithful than mm -hmm. some of the other faithful. It's like, what? Where, where is this coming from? But anyway, um, so when they did that, it was like perfect i was like oh snap you know and somebody had mentioned the salt and and this um k had said something about the salt and the using the salt and the sugar package because the the sugar was the white the salt was the white packet the pepper was the black packet and the sugar was the brown because we were using sugar cane but then we went to the pool table you know we yeah. went to the, yeah because the, the two whites weren't working um <laughs> Uh, so anyway, yeah, it was a mess. But look, you guys don't see, we film for 16 hours a day. Wow. There's a lot of stuff people don't see. So um, I'm glad I got the opportunity to uh, answer some questions, clear the air, let you guys know what I thought or what I suspected. But it wasn't always concrete, you know. For sure. Yeah. I feel like that moment at the pool table really opened a lot of people's eyes to how much game goes on beyond just that, I think this person's a trader, I'm going to go for them. And it really seemed like, like you said, you mobilized the other side of the house of like, we can't let them have the power. We need to snipe a couple of them out. So then ultimately there's no banishment thanks to this twist with the, with the safety. Oh, we didn't then, like that. We okay, didn't like love that. that. Love that you didn't like it because neither did we, <laughs> neither did we. We were mad. <laughs> So then what happened? Because obviously then by the next round table, Parv does end up leaving. What changed in the in between those uh, two moments? Okay, the fact that Bergie went home, then we were able to say, okay, we're willing to now go after a trader that's within our own alliance simply because we still have two on them. Mm -hmm. You know, we we're still outnumbering them by two and they quickly start falling. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, one minute we're saying one thing, but by the next minute, you know, so much changes. Um, and, you know, once we go to bed, there's no more talking till breakfast in the morning. Yeah. So, you know, everyone's like, how did you 
sleep? What did you think? Is there anything we need to know? And then we start rolling into the next day. So that banishment that they canceled that night, was Parv going to go out at that banishment or was Peter going to go out at that banishment? I'm almost 1000% certain it would have been Peter. Okay. But that's how I was going to vote. Yeah. But, and because, and you had known at that point that Parv was a traitor and you felt like that she was a, a traitor angel for you and you wanted to keep her around, right? Absolutely. Like Parv had no reason, any information I was getting, I was sharing with her. Even before Dan went home, any information I was getting, I was sharing with him. I was always with Phaedra. Um, you know, if they felt like they needed to check in with me, uh, what's everybody talking about? Oh, da, 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 da. And then I'd walk off. Like, I don't need information from you. I mean, yeah. I felt like I was always getting a lot of information. So I'm giving it out, not getting it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm giving it out. Um, Anything I'd find out, I'd tell them and then walk off. Like, I need to go over here and I need to go yeah. over there. Because they also don't want us lumped up in one room. They want us in different rooms. So if you're in the billiard room, they're in the kitchen, they're in the library, they're in the breakfast room, or they're at the bar, you know? So where is it, you know, or outside. So it all depends on where you're at. So you got to move around this castle all day. Yeah. Cause it, if you know who the traitors are, the worst thing you can do is banish the traitors because then they get to pick a new traitor. And now you don't know who the traitors are. Exactly. So when Dan was on the hot seat, I really had never looked at Dan. I suspected poverty. Poverty is the first name on my list. The minute I didn't get picked, I was like, it's poverty. <laughs> but then I talked myself out of that one, which I'm sure you've heard, because I was like, I'm the two-time winner. Like, if somebody should be the damn traitor. But when I wasn't, I was like, maybe she isn't. You know, like, I don't know what these people are thinking. Well, she wasn't at first. You were right. <laughs> Yeah, but, um, and also I looked at the housewives. I was like, my God, there's like six of them. You know, yeah, there's five. And then uh, Marcus Jordan is part of that clique. And MJ mm -hmm. is part of that clique because she's a Bravo. So they essentially had the numbers over the gamers, what they considered were the gamers. Banana, CT, Trishel, me, Parvati, Dan, and Janelle. Mm -hmm. So I want to be over there too. I'm already with the gamers because I'm a gamer. But I want to know what's happening over there with them housewives. Who was the first person outside of the non-gamers that you connected with and linked up with early in the game? Oh, on day one. So we spent three days filming episode one. The location mm -hmm. for the mission was very far away. It was a, a hours on a, in the car. Mm. So day one, and that's what happened on day one. If you see how they arrive in the car, those were the initial alliances. So my alliance was Peppermint. Sheree, Peter, and myself. And there was a there was several times where they would say, who are your traitors? Like, have you changed? And I'm like, Sheree and Peter have to be protecting me. Mm -hmm. Like, now I thought they were the traitor angels, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but we had an alliance called THC. Love and that. it was the Highland Council because they would park <laughs> us in front of this church, Very high. Highland Council Church. Yeah. So that became our alliance name. And the minute we lost Peppermint, we fell apart. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Sandra, could you talk a little bit about, because I've heard the story a bunch of times how that, you know, you and Parv came into the game. You didn't know how it was going to go, that there was a little bit of tension there. Peppermint was the one who really got you two to sit down and see eye to eye. And then after that, everything was good. H how did Peppermint, uh, how was she able to do this? So Peppermint knows all these reality shows. She knows everything about Survivor. She knew about me and Poverty's feud. She already followed us. Um, and so, and then she was in the car with me and she was there. Like Peter was sitting right next to me when I first get a glimpse of Poverty for the very first time. Yeah. And you know, I'm in that car talking shit. <laughs> and they heard all of it. Of all the 700 plus survivors, why did it have to be her? Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I felt like I'm so focused on this game. Now I have to also additionally deal with our 10 years of drama. Yeah. Since I won heroes versus villains in 2010, since I was crowned the queen of survivor, you know, it's, it's been since then. Um, and peppermint, you know, her and peppermint, I think we're already in that room and I come in and I'm like, 
yeah, I'm not happy. Yeah. And so Peppermint was like, listen, we need to, you know, put everything behind us. And I'm all for it. Like, maybe I needed to apologize as well because I know I say things too, but I always feel like I don't say anything unless someone comes for me first. So um, she said, I want to play the game. I don't want to have to worry about our feud. I want to let all this, you know, bygones be bygones. And I'm like, okay, I could do that because if that's how you honestly feel and if, if that's where your heart is and you really want to focus on this game, that is exactly what I want to do. That doesn't mean I'm not going to be watching you. Uh, but if something happens, it won't be because I started it first. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was like, okay, let's do that. And we shook hands and I never looked back. Wow. I, I was on to other things. I, I That was in the back burner. Now I'm with the housewives. You know what I'm saying? I'm with the, with the faithful. Wow. Peppermint. I, I can't believe it. Can can she sit down with Trishel and MJ, do you think? And get them Broker get them to see eye to eye. Broker a piece there also. I don't know. Um, I think <laughs> Trishel and MJ are okay. MJ's not okay, I think, with CT because that's oh. the one that didn't want to split the money. Yeah. Okay. But so here's the thing, like MJ recognizes she was wrong in the fact that you can't be mad at Trishel because you've now written her name down twice. Right. You wrote her name down first. And then in the revote, CT and Trishel watched her again, right? Yeah. Trishel, big as hell, <laughs> you know, instead of CT, two letters. So I don't see why Trishel would have to apologize. And I don't. Like I keep saying, I don't even feel bad for MJ. She did that crap to me 15 minutes prior because my right. man, I go out to do exit interviews. They leave to go to the front of the castle and finish this game. Well, so I don't even feel bad for her. She did that crap to me 15 I minutes I said ago. on Thursday, if anybody has a reason to be mad at CT and Trishel, it should be Sandra. And I'm not mad at Trishel. I'm not mad at CT. CT put that money in that prize pot, let me tell you. Yeah. Hmm. He put most of that money in that prize pot. Mm -hmm. He deserved it. And so did Trishel. Because yeah. she never censored herself. She went in there fighting every banishment, thinking, I'm getting murdered, I'm getting burned, murdered to hell with it. And she didn't get murdered. Phaedra should have murdered her. I tell her all the time, Trishel, Phaedra should have murdered you. <laughs> but she didn't. Yeah. Yeah, she and then she makes it all the way to the end. Sandra, you were very vocal in wanting to be a traitor. And, and you know, I feel like you are someone who you've watched all the seasons, so you know. Where did the traitors go wrong this season? Because it was a very, very tough game for them. <laughs> so Dan made a mistake in trying to go after Bergie because Parvati knew he had the shield. Uh, it was obvious that Peter had set them up. He could have went for anyone at the castle. He could have went for, for John from Parliament who was in the castle. You know what I'm no. saying? If he didn't want to touch me or Phaedra or, you know, certain people that were working with him, they could have easily taken out one person, which wouldn't have mattered from inside the castle. Parvati messed up in trying to recruit Peter. I was like, Parvati. And I told her, I said, I would have worked with you. She's like, no, I think you would have threw me under the bus. I, I don't. Guys, I honestly believe that that is not the type of game I'm playing. You know what I'm saying? That the first minute I get a little bit of power and the first minute I become a traitor, that my mission now becomes get rid of poverty because she's a traitor. No, you know, that wouldn't be my mission. Um, and Phaedra messed up in in recruiting Kate. Yeah. Should she have recruited you in that spot? Yes, but she told me that she had been burned by Dan and Poverty and she couldn't let another trade, uh, another gamer go into the, you know what I'm saying? She couldn't yeah. allow for another gamer. But the minute she picked Kate, Kate and her, they won't say, but there was a big fight at that round table because Kate was telling her, you are gonna learn today. And those were the words that Phaedra used at a previous banishment and I don't know to who, but she was like, you gonna learn today. Like, you don't just tell somebody you're going to learn today. You know what I'm saying? Like, Was that the same roundtable when she said that Phaedra was selfish? Yes. And then as Phaedra was talking, I would watch, like, uh, in the video, you see her turn around, Kate turn around and listen to Phaedra. But there was a point when 
Phaedra got up or in between them that she gave her her back. And I'm like, she's not waiting to hear Phaedra's a faithful or a traitor. She knows Phaedra's a damn traitor. Mm -hmm. I love Because that. anytime anybody goes to the circle of truth, everybody turns around to watch it. But here's Kate turned around, messing with her fingernails. Yeah. And it, I was like, wait, I wanted to ask you about what happened at the round table. Yeah, it was wild watching Kate's game implode be, like before our eyes. From the minute Phaedra goes out, everything she did was a big giveaway as to what was going on. So that was a lot. Yeah, Kate um, did, they had zero strategy. Um uh, they're not built like us. You know what I'm saying? She's smart as a whip. She can, you know, cut you down to size with two words. Um, you know, she, she's good. Kate is good at that. You know, she's funny. She's hilarious. I love her to death. Um, but I definitely feel like Phaedra messed up. Or even after picking Kate, if Phaedra would have said, hey, Sandra, Sheree, because me and Sheree were not going to vote for Phaedra until we knew everyone there was going to. Had she said something, had Phaedra come up to us and said, okay, me, you, and Kate, us four, we're going to vote together and take out Trishel, MJ, or CT, I would have been so down with that. You know what I'm saying? And then we could have worked some magic. So, um, but Phaedra messed up picking Kate mm -hmm. because then Kate became the traitor angel of the smokers alliance and yeah, me yes. and Sheree were taken out. Okay. And I didn't figure that out until it was too late. And I was mm -hmm. sitting at home like, wait a minute, those are the smokers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about that? The smokers alliance? Yeah. So they would go to smoke, um, CT, Trishel, MJ and CT and, and Kate. Kate, Kate. Yeah. And nobody ever said anything. I never said anything, you know, didn't even dawn on me until after it was all said and done. And they're sitting there at the end and I'm watching it on TV and I'm thinking, oh my God, how many times did they go to chat it out while smoking or even bringing in this information? Because Kate was part of the leftover. So was MJ. So was CT. But we saw that CT was trying to give information to Peter at one point. Trisha was part of that crew. So could there have been some talk? Had to have been. You just don't sit there. And then when I was reading comments by other people about the Smokers Alliance, they're like, yeah, I used to smoke with my boss and got preferential treatment. Like, you know, like there's something yeah. to be said about a smoking oh. alliance. So I'm like, season three, if you're watching this video, anybody that smokes, take them out. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say start smoking before you go play. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't do that. Quitting, that's going to be tough. As a former smoker, Sandra, 100% this is the case. When you go out to a party or when you're hanging out with friends, there are two worlds going on. The smokers outside and the party inside. And if you're part of the smokers outside, you get all the info of what's going on inside and then some. And even if they, even if like the producers weren't letting them speak or whatever the thing is, there's still that bond there. There's still that silence of, this is kind of my comfort zone. This is where I go to de-stress, and these are the people I'm de-stressing with. So I think even if they weren't really dishing out a lot of info, there has to be some kind of solidity going on there for yeah, sure. Yeah, that, that was really an oversight. I mean, I, I didn't see it. I'm not perfect. You know what I'm saying? Never did yeah. I even think about it. But, Sandra, that's more of a big brother thing. That Us survivors, we don't have to worry about who's out smoking cigarettes together. That <laughs> yeah, doesn't come up on Survivor. Yeah. Yeah who's in the backyard smoking. Okay. Yeah. Um, can you go back? Speaking of big brother, you had the big blow up with Janelle during the season. You seem to think that at some point that Janelle became a traitor. I, I, I'm assuming, and you weren't just saying that at, at the, at the banishment ceremony. Well, why did you feel like that Janelle had become a traitor? No, I thought she was a traitor because she said, damn, poverty, CT, and Sandra. Yep. Whenever we go to the round table, anytime you write down someone's name, they want you to say whether you mean it or not. I'm voting for you because I think you're a traitor because. Yeah. So whether I think you're a traitor or not, Rob, I'm voting for you because I hate the way you sip coffee. Oh. I think you're a traitor. <laughs> yeah. So you still have to say those words. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed yeah. to. Some people say, like, I don't think you're a traitor, but you're supposed to yeah. say something when you write somebody's mm -hmm. name down. Yeah, I don't think Sheree was saying uh, that she thought anybody was a traitor. 
Yeah. Well, I, I made sure to do what I'm supposed to do. You're always supposed to like when we vote on uh, in tribal council, they want you to give that person you're voting out some respect as to why, yeah. you know, you're voting them out. And I always say something. Um, so I was just saying, I didn't even know where that was coming from. I was taken off guard. I couldn't believe, of course, as a faithful that she's calling me a traitor. Had I been a traitor, then I'm like, oh my gosh, she's caught me. But no, I'm a faithful. So Howard, oh, all the traitors are in the castle, which I did not know, you know, was the truth in hindsight. You never know who all of the traitors are at one point. Um, she was telling the truth. She was right. But then she said, Dan, Parvati, CT, and Sandra. And she might not have even gone home because she asked me about that. I was like, I always try to come into the round table with an open mind. And after listening to everyone for an hour and a half to two hours, I hope that I have a feel for where the votes are going to be. And I want to be in the majority or not, whether that was the plan or not, you know. But the minute she says CT and Sandra, we were like, we're done with her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, no. I don't we, want my name to come up. I don't want people to think I'm a, a traitor, especially if I'm a faithful. Right. Now you just can't have someone who's putting your name out there be involved moving forward because they might do it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's like Kevin and Peter coming up with this perfect plan of you write my name and I write down yours. I saw that on TV and I was like, oh my god, no, you do not do that when you go play these games. <laughs> you never want your name out there because it's only going to keep coming up. Yeah. Um, could you talk a little bit about Dan when he went out and that whether you, or not you felt like that Dan was a traitor at that point? Um, only when everyone started suspecting him that I started watching him. But then, like I said, he was my traitor angel. If that was the case, and I'd still sit with him and talk to him. And I told him that last night, um, the night prior to him going home, I was like, dude, you got to say something. You got to say something. There's no more tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Whatever you say, it better be damn good, you know? And then we go to breakfast where he's supposed to throw out a name and he's still not throwing out names. So it it, it was a done deal. Yeah. It was a done deal. And but he kept saying, when I do talk, the name that I give you, that's where you have to like, you got to watch and you got to pay attention and that's the road you got to go down. And so it was clear as day. The minute he saw, he said, Phaedra, we didn't want to believe it. But then people started, okay, I'm not 100% sold on Dan. But we're going to start watching her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that ended up being a turning point in the game. And, and honestly, like the, a lot of the online discourse has been, did Dan sell her out for, you know, whatever petty reason or I and so on? That. I agree with that because she wasn't on anyone's radar. And even after he said her name, look how long she lasted. Right. Yeah. For different reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, it was because I was like, OK, if Phaedra is a traitor, huh, I'm going to be her best friend. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or yeah. as close to it as possible, because I know her and Sheree go back 20 years, too. Yeah, that, but. I mean, I do see the logic in what Dan was trying to do of like, hey, if you vote out Phaedra tonight and then it turns out she's a traitor, like he is like the hero, right? That everybody is like, wow, oh my God, Dan. Not necessarily. After watching so many traitors, that's not necessarily the the like, oh my God, you're now you're the the, the detective of the castle and everything you say goes. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the ceiling for that is best case scenario of what you described happens, but then he has to get murdered soon because why would the traders keep him in? So once he survives two rounds, they're like, ah, that suspect, get out. So yeah. I still think it's a tough place. I think the worst thing he did was he didn't breadcrumb it. He didn't le start earlier and it seemed like he did it all in one go, which just was never going to work out. Yeah, he didn't debate it. He just went out to the round table and then started putting it out. He never talked to anyone about it. Or, you know, it was just like when what I say is like what I say is it and that's it. Like you have to believe me and that's it. But people want to talk things out. People want to add their two cents of what they've seen, what they've heard, what they witnessed. Sandra, I've heard you on uh, other uh, interviews talking about how long these roundtables are and how you wish we would have seen more. Can you... You know, give us a little juicy info, like a couple moments that we may have missed from any roundtable of your choice 
That was a good time. Oh my God. So for instance, my last round table, one of the things MJ told me first was that she thought I was a traitor because I put crickets in Kevin's back, which I did being funny and stupid. <laughs> Kevin was scared. He stayed in the in the inside the cabin. And then when it was like two minutes left. CT comes to get me and poverty because we're still messing with the cage of the gold coin with the rats. And we didn't know that we needed a tool from the last section to open the box in the first section where we're at. We didn't, we didn't know that. And they found mm -hmm. a tool, didn't know what it was for. Um, so uh, Kevin comes down and he's covered in crickets. He's having an attack too. And I thought it was funny as hell. This is a grown ass man. So he's like, help me get these crickets off my back. And I'm getting them off, but I'm also pulling his hoodie and sticking them down in. Like, <laughs> so I, I'm having a lot, you know, shit to giggles, right? I'm, yeah. I'm having a good time. She tells me that this is a reason she thinks I'm a traitor. And this to me was like, baloney like i've never questioned you i've been loyal to you from the beginning there was a point in time in the game where mj was being questioned as being a traitor and i supported her i never gave her my back i was like girl don't even worry about it ain't nobody getting rid of you at no round table like you are not a traitor we got you you know what i'm saying and then for me to hear the stupid reasons why she's claiming yeah. just Fine. Why I'm a traitor? I'm like you throwing spaghetti at the wall. This is ridiculous. You know, yeah. I know why CT had doubts about me, and I didn't realize it until I saw it on TV in episode nine. But the roundtables would go for a while. Sometimes they tell John to like, okay, enough, John, like wrap it up. You know what I'm saying? Like he would get long winded, but the stuff he said was always awesome stuff too. You know, mm -hmm. like really. Yeah. Tell a story at the round table and people love this. So I would just sit there and listen. Mm -hmm. What about when you went to the reunion show? Was there more that happened at the reunion show than we got to see? Yeah. So the reunion show, I think we started filming at one and we finished at four. It was a long time. Yeah. And it was really mad. <laughs> uh, anytime. We got that. Yeah. Yeah, so the one thing I noticed, I was like, oh, my God, like, Trishel NCT won, and here I am answering, like, question number six directed specifically at me because Andy was using um, people from, like, uh, Puya from Cincinnati wants to know. So yeah. he asked me, like, six questions, and finally CT gets asked a question. MJ buds in, and he's like, I finally get a question. After sitting here quietly for three hours, I've been very patient, but I'm not going to allow you to keep, like, you know, anytime Trishel says something, here she was, here she was. Here yeah. She was. So yeah. they cut a lot of that, too. Yeah, we talked for a while. Yeah. Why'd they cut that out? Uh, I think because their reunion is only one hour. Yeah, well, <laughs> like, they left a lot of stuff in there that they could have cut. Off, you know, yeah. but... And I felt good. I was like, oh, shit, like I'm getting six questions here. Like, what? Yeah. And here's CT on his first. And right. I already answered six things. Like, uh, What was your reaction, Sandra, watching that final Fire of Truth moment where they do end up, like how it all played out with the MJ vote, with the Tide vote before the MJ vote out? How was, what was your reaction to watching all that play out? I had heard little bits and pieces of it, but it never is the same as to watching it, you mm -hmm. know? Um, I was told that MJ actually walked away and they said, no, you got to go back when she realized that she was done. Like they weren't going to share the money with her. Um, and I thought actually that CT had won. I, I couldn't understand. I had heard that Trishel was mad at CT and didn't want to talk to him, but I didn't know why. Um, you know, because they won. Um, so it was like a bunch of misunderstandings, a lot of hearsay. Nobody was giving a straight answer. So I wanted to watch it on my own. But like I said, when I saw they got rid of MJ, I was like. Game's the game. <laughs> I don't feel bad for you because yeah. I just got the ax. If you would have stuck with me and Trishel, I'm sure we would have all shared that money. I would have never done anyone like that. I knew there were faithfuls. I had no, I wouldn't have said, I think there's still one traitor here. No, you know, but. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a very non-strategic question, but I'm very morbidly curious about this, Sandra. What were the breakfasts like? Was it a good spread? 
Was it a good time? No. Let me tell you why. You don't like so, boiled egg? I like boiled eggs, and it's like they only boil one dozen a day, right? <laughs> so being that a lot of the times I was one of the last ones to go in, the eggs were always gone. The salmon, the meat tray was always gone, like the meat with the salamis and the pers- uh, what's the, that one called? Prosciutto? Yeah. Yeah, that one. All the best cheeses were always gone. Excuse me. And then, um, for instance, I always say this, like, we'd have coffee and maybe sugar. This time they forgot the milk. Or we'd have coffee with milk, and this time they forgot the sugar. Or yeah, they would bring pancakes. There was never syrup on that table. What the hell? <laughs> I don't eat pancakes without syrup. Dry? Like, no. Um, There would be, like, English muffins. I like to put jam on my English muffins or some peanut butter spread. So I'm like, come on, let me, and I would be like, can I just tell you what to ask for? Oh, it comes to catering. People just drop it off and we put it out on the table. And I'm like, well, who's in charge of this? You know, um, our meals throughout the day, they cook a lot of potatoes in a thousand and one million gazillion ways over there. So it's like potato stroganoff and potato lasagna and potato. <laughs> like, oh my God. Yeah. I don't know, Sandra. You tell me Alan Cumming is eating a pancake with no syrup? No, 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 no. I'm sure they have their own stuff because they have their own separate kitchen, too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But there was a lot of that. They'd give us a uh, salad with no dressing. Like, where the hell is the dressing? Oh, they, they give you, uh, like, straight up balsamic vinegar and olive oil. No, I need Italian. <laughs> I need Caesar, ranch, blue cheese. Like, so dry. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah no i can't imagine how, how tough on the voice it's gonna be to go pancake no syrup and then english muffin with like no no proper fixings on it either yeah i mean you're not giving me an egg a sausage and cheese so you know i'm gonna want this english muffin with something <laughs> do so, better yeah. traders Come but, on. But they did put out it was a lot a lot of pastries and i'm guessing the pay you know you can never go wrong with pastries but no, we want other things. We're Americans. We want American, you know. Mm-hmm. How hard is it to unfreeze a sausage patty? <laughs> warm right. Up, warm up bacon in a microwave. Right. Or put it in the kitchen. The, you guys had a kitchen. They need to hire me for that castle kitchen. Yeah. You not would do that, cook. Sandra? You would You would be the cook? No, not to cook because I'm a horrible cook. My okay. husband will tell you. But at least I'd be like, okay, French toast sticks, uh, pancakes. You would advise. Yeah. Well, you would put the menu together. Um, waffles and syrup. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, if you're going to bring me fries, bring me ketchup. Yeah. Bring me tartar sauce. <laughs> yeah. Tartar sauce with fries? No, I'm just being stupid. Yeah, don't, I was gonna yeah, don't say, bring it. don't bring not it. Not to judge him hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Sandra, was there any bad blood when you ran into Larsa at the reunion after you talked about uh, how you were surprised that she's the same age as you because she looks much older? Okay, so I was ready because I kept getting told by the housewives, Larsa's coming for you. And I was like, okay, let her come. I mean, it was messed up what I said. It was uncalled for. I shouldn't have said it. I don't even know why I said it. I don't even remember saying it, but it's still the truth, like for real. (laughs) So I was like, I'm ready. She's going to say something. And then, but Andy came out and said, uh, he said a few words to you. He was like, guys, you know, for those of you that think this is going to be a black but blood bath because that's how the housewives do during their reunion episodes like they go all out it's nothing like that this is a game remember that it's only a game and you know the fans have um asked a lot of questions and we're going to try to get to all of them blah blah so don't it's not going to be what i guess everyone was saying like Oh, uh, maybe if Peppermint and Trishel are going to have an issue or if Peter's going to be mad, um, Dan's going to be mad at Phaedra or vice versa. You know what I'm saying? Like, I guess people were expecting it to be harsh, but it didn't. Isn't throw. the show a literal bloodbath? You murder people the whole time. The housewives well, yeah, isn't even a game. Union, like, we thought it was going to be more like the housewives. Yeah. You know, you know, pulling hair, slapping, throwing wine, none of that. But mm-hmm. um, so anyway. We end up having a, a water and bathroom break. 
But me and Tamara were sitting on the sofa. We never got up. And neither did Larsa and Janelle. So they're okay. on the stools. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm with Tamara and Larsa says, um, did you get your eyes checked? And I said, and I knew she was talking to me because who the hell, there's no one there but empty chairs and couches. Yeah. And I said, um, I already wear glasses, right? Because I do, I wear glasses. Yeah. I wear glasses. And she was like, oh, so you did get your eyes checked. And I said, I wear glasses, right? Yeah. I know what she's getting at. She said, oh, because you said that I look 15 years older than you. I said 10 to 12. Mm-hmm. And 10 to 12, I said, I said, you look 10 to 12 years older than me, not 15. Like, yeah, that's what I said. 10 to 12. I didn't say 15. Don't I get it twisted. Yeah. And Tamara touches me and starts talking to me. So then I'm already done over here. Like I didn't wait for a response. I was done, you know? Yeah. Um, and that was it. Okay. Never took a picture with her. Never nothing. What about Marcus? Did he give you he the stink eye? Crap. And he yeah. wasn't there when she was saying that to me. Okay. He stayed quiet in his little corner in his little area next to her. They're working on their relationship. Good for them. And I didn't have nothing else to say. But I was yes. told. Yes. Some people heard that exchange and were like, girl, whatever you said to her, she, she must have been irritated by it because she got some more work done on her face. Uh, oh, <laughs> since my then? God. <laughs> The only issue I had when I said that it was just because like they would she would hog up like the uh in the wardrobe when we change from missions, you know, yes. there's mirrors and then there's seats and you put on makeup, but under her skin is really mushy, like like yeah. really like lumpy and stuff. I think that's what she might have fixed now. But because I don't put on a lot of makeup, I don't I don't have all that looking um, good. It's looking the, good. The turkey stuff, the turkey yeah. stuff they say people have the gobble gobble under here under the chin. So I don't mm-hmm. So that was it. That's why I thought she was older than me. I could tell she had done plastic surgery and, you know, um, I didn't know her. I didn't know how she looked before. So then I, of course I come back and the fans are like, you should see how she looked before she got all, she's a two totally different people, two totally different skin tones, two <laughs> totally different faces. I'm like, Oh damn. So. Okay. I only know her now. I don't know. I can't, I don't, I don't know what she looked like before. Yeah. Um, well, there's such those pictures out there. Well, I'll, I'll look them up after. <laughs> Sandra, what are you gonna do next? I don't know. Um, I don't know where my next check is coming from. My cameos ain't popping like they used to. Why not? Anybody who wanted a cameo from me already got it. Even after traders that you don't have new fans. Oh yeah, but a lot of them say, Sandra, I loved you on Survivor and you were awesome on Traders. I'm so sad you didn't yeah. win. And I'm like, me too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, well, I mean, what what can you do next? What about have you watched Boston Rob's Deal or No Deal Island? Would you do I that? Have, I've already caught up to all three episodes. Yes, it's been very good. Um, I would do it. I but here's the thing though. On um, that one, it looks like only one person is gonna take the prize pot. It's not like traders where at least you have a shot at getting to the final four you know what i'm saying like yeah there's more opportunity to get to the money and at least even split it where okay but you won survivor and only one person wins true yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it's not you you can do it i probably could yeah I how would you do against the banker out? like i don't know um you're up for gambling right yeah, I'm awful at it, but mm-hmm. I get, I mean, I've watched what they do is pick a briefcase and hope you got a good one. And if the, 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 what is it? The, the you gotta be better than the banker's the offer. offer. The banker. Yeah. The banker's offer. Cause Claudia messed up, man. She yeah. should have took that one because several people are like, take it, take it, take it. She's like, no, there's still two more pots up there. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think Deal or No Deal Island would be more up my alley than something like The Amazing Race or, or like or the Challenge or USA. Oh hell no! <laughs> I watch, but they always come after the Survivor. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, like yeah, I'm not going into the sand. Like yeah. No. What about Squid Game? Would you go on Squid Game? I think I could like do Figgy. Games. 
you know, yeah. like, yeah, I think I could do that. Yeah, I think you'd be good in there. I'd be down for I that. I, I Everyone was talking about a girl's trip, like uh, what the girl's trip is, which I looked it up, you know, when a lot of celebrities get together yeah. they go on a girl's trip. And I'm like, I'd be so perfect, I think, at a girl's trip because – First, they'd have to put me in a bikini, which I do not wear. So imagine me in a bikini on a girl's trip, right? <laughs> and then making me do all this water stuff on a yeah. vacation because I don't do crap in the water. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. so I, I think I would bring like an element of fun. Sure. Who's on the girl's trip with you? No, 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 no. They're just throwing it out there. Oh, if I had a girl's yeah, trip. Yeah, what's your yeah. roster? Oh, uh, definitely a lot of the girls from the Trader House, okay. including like Stephanie and um, oh, even from Rachel last season and yeah. uh, 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 Janelle. Of course, she'd probably be the boss of the girls' trip, like because she does all kinds of fun stuff. So she'd be in charge of all the fun, and then of course the housewives because they're experienced at having these girl parties um, and doing the most outrageous things. And then maybe a couple of the survivor girls that are fun, you know? Who? Who else? Uh, <laughs> Rollins name. <laughs> yeah. This would be good. This would be good. Uh, who would be fun at a girls' trip? Um Courtney. Courtney has to be there. Yeah. Jerry has to be there. Yes. Um, this is a good Courtney, girls' trip. Krista. I have to bring Krista because yep. Krista's my girl. Um, uh, I don't know how much fun Krista would be. But, uh, well, I get the impression Krista would be a lot of fun on the girls trip well she's on her fourth kid and he's little so maybe she her mind wouldn't be her heart mm -hmm. wouldn't be into the vacation but maybe so definitely um D, D for, that just recently oh, okay. would be a fun girls trip yeah. um, wow uh, oh my god there's a lot of girls out there I'd have to really like put together a list we got to get the I networks fighting over this. This mm -hmm. should be on Paramount Plus now with all the survivors. Tommy, I got the connect. <laughs> I'll find all the, yes. you know, the reality, the best of the best from like uh, the Big Brother house, like Taylor. Um, who else is fun on the Big Brother house? Well, I know that uh, I will be down for uh, Mama Fee. Felicia. Oh, wow. Yes. We need okay. her, uh, mustard seed uh, commentary. The faith of the mustard seed. Okay. Yeah. Maybe let's, um, uh, we should have some meetings about maybe we can get this greenlit of Sandra's yeah. girls trip. Yeah. Some of the people from the cookout for sure. Some of the girls from the cookout. Like, we Does got, anybody get voted off or you just go different places? No, you just do a bunch of random shit and have fun and see who falls. Um, <laughs> you know, like wind sailing, something I would uh, not wind sailing. When is it that they put you in the chair and you go above the water and then the sharks are looking at you and they want to <laughs> yeah, you? what is yeah, that? I don't know what that's called. Yeah, when you when you go on the boat. Yeah, I know. I know what you're talking about. It's like uh, it's like a paragliding, but it's a but it's in a chair. You're in a chair. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see all the TikToks and they're dragging you across the sand and the thing never takes off. And yeah, yeah. sign yeah. me up for that. Um, <laughs> Sandra, what about House of Villains? If House oh. of Villains came calling. You know what? I actually watched the whole season um, recently. Where was I? Was I caught it on the airplane and then I couldn't turn it off. <laughs> uh, because the airplane kept asking me, Are you watching it? Are you watching me? Do you want to do. Um, uh, interviews and stuff like that, but I hadn't been watching it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I was, I was doing, you know, getting ready for my trader stuff, so I hadn't even been watching it or anything like that. I hate that I didn't watch it when it came out. Um, but I don't think they missed me because he kept saying it was the number one show uh, across all the networks. Yeah, but they're going to do more. Right, the traders were mm -hmm. number one. Mm -hmm. uh, but I hadn't watched it, but I, I caught up to it and I saw all of it now. I'm caught up. But would you go? I think I could do it. Yeah. I'm not like a vicious villain villain. Yeah, I, and I know right. you were on the villains tribe, but do you really embrace the name of villain? No, I, I, I think. Yeah, I think I only turn ugly when I'm forced to. I, hmm. I don't really think of you as a villain. Yeah. Like I, I think even on heroes versus villains, I think that they could have just as easily put you in the heroes tribe. But but 
they put me in the right place because they put me right where I belong. I right where why. you belong. Right. Yeah, because I'm not asking for permission to eat a banana off one of the 200 trees on the on the beach. Like, <laughs> like, why would I have to ask you if it's okay to eat a banana? Like, no. Yeah. So I, I needed to be with the villains. Yeah. Okay. Sandra, you said before we came on that you had something that you wanted to open on the podcast that was from... Of course, an another survivor great uh, that okay. Uh you got something in the box. Okay, what's in the box, Sandra? Oh, Todd, all I knew was Sandra, I sent you a package and I was like, "Oh my god, Todd, I'm stuck in Atlanta, but the minute I go home, I'm going to open it." So, um now that we had our interview, I'm going to open uh, a present from Todd. Let's okay. see what it is. And Todd for many years has been working on he makes custom Pop figures. Yeah, his Todd's Pop Shop. Okay. And he can make you a pop of your favorite Survivor players. He can make you a pop for your wedding cake, for you and your loved one. Like, he can make a pop out of your, your favorite pet. Hold on. I'm opening up all he this. He does animals stuff. also. Yeah, he does animals. Okay. Oh, there it is. I was just ripping off the tape, but not realizing where the hell I opened the box up. Okay. Now, yeah. I'll I'm put gonna... Sandra in the big Love an frame unboxer. here. Okay, there yeah. we go. Don't give me a challenge where I have to open a box. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to have to destroy this box because I don't know how I opened yep. it. I saw Boston Rob tweeted that you did more challenges on the traders than you did all through Survivor. Yeah. Oh, well, here's the thing, though. When I did Australian Survivor, I did four, 13 out of 14 challenges. Okay. So I didn't sit out until the end, and then they voted me out. But on the missions, you can't sit out. Like, that's not an option. Yeah. Um, you seem like you were holding your own on the missions. That wasn't part of the show that you were having oh, any problems. Oh, you know what? Once I saw, like, like for instance, I remember Phaedra and Sheree didn't do the swim test until we did the water challenge with the gold nuggets. Mm -hmm. so we had to go across those platforms. So I wasn't the only one that didn't care much for water. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yeah. And then I'd see them performing. I'm like, oh, okay. Like Sheree held her own because she's a runner. She used to be a runner, I guess. Right. So they came they to just, like Pedra, MJK. On Survivor, there's too many athletes. They, they they put you out in the field with a bunch of real housewives. You're holding your own. Mm -hmm. You're middle of the pack. Ooh. No, I was at the front of the pack. Front of the pack. Today. Yeah. Okay. All right. What do you got, Sandra? Thank you always for being there for me. I love you, Queen Stays Queen. It's yes. Sandra. Okay. Let's see. I have one pop for each one of my Survivor seasons. Yes. I even have my totem, my big totem. Can you okay. see Okay. Yeah. All right. And so Yo. from Todd, from we Todd, have. It's a surprise. Packs it very well. Ooh. Oh, look at this. Ah, my trader pop. Trader pop. What what are you holding in, in your hand? It's like the, my trader pop. Oh, the lantern. Yeah, yeah. the lantern. And yes. I have a crown and I'm wearing the green cape. Yes. And this is gonna go good with the uh five gold nuggets I took from the, <laughs> from the mission. Um our mission for the yeah. gold. The gold um hold on. Yeah. yeah, that's perfect. Love it. Yeah, okay. I love it, it's beautiful. Thank you, Todd. Everyone, Todd's pop shop. Yeah, it's okay. Custom pop. All right. Well, Sandra, what else is coming up for you? Nothing. Give me a gig. Um, what do you want? Okay. So we're gonna, we're gonna work on trading. girls trip. Okay. We'd love to have uh, you on, Sandra. Uh, see what other. Well, uh, listen, if anybody's casting another show, Sandra's available. Um, call me. Okay. All right. And then we'll see what happens next. What about, would you go on Big Brother like Suri did last summer? Not for a hundred days. It has to be like a celebrity Big Brother. But you'd be. Mm -hmm. I always say you'd be good at Big Brother. Hmm. You'd be good at Big Brother. No, because a lot of them, the, listen, it, it happened like it happened in the castle. They were like, oh, you come from Survivor, like Sari, who won last season, and already you're a target. Yeah, but now so you followed in, in Sari onto Traders, and now Sari didn't win Big Brother. And let me tell you what, how about they were trying to get a hold of me for the season one of the Traders? Oh, well, what happened? I don't read my damn messages. Oh. oh, and there was a person claiming to be my agent, and I don't even have an agent. 
uh, that they had contacted and was saying, send the check and, um, you know, Sandra do it. And it wasn't even me. Wow. Oh my but, God. I'm glad, but I'm glad they found me for season two. Yes, they found you. Because I don't know if our cast could ever be matched. It's like Heroes and Villains cast. Yeah, it's Sorry. a great cast. Well, Heroes and but, Villains cast was the ultimate. Yeah, but... You know, you you told me before with Survivor, you said you look at Survivor, it's like jail. You go in, you do your time, you're there. That's how that's the right mentality for Big Brother, Sandra. You're already ready. You're really trying to make Sandra go on Big Brother. Hey, Sandra on Big Brother would be uh would be perfect. 24-7. People are messy. I can't stand a dirty kitchen. I don't want to have to come and tell you to get your shit out the dryer or <laughs> from the washer into the dryer yeah i don't want to have to say whose socks are these that got left in the dryer just like, consider it think about it here's no. the thing for they, our they, enjoyment they let, yeah yes you but... know what they let uh Sari play with her son maybe nina can go too <laughs> yeah, you're not selling her any more on it. She's listen. Days is a lot. You, I've been married for thirty successful years. You trying to get me divorced? <laughs> Why would you get divorced? My yeah. husband has a break, but not a three month break. Oh, okay. All right. He could watch the live feeds. That's not the same. <laughs> Rob, would you go on Big Brother? Sure, I would go, but I wouldn't do as good as Sandra. Sandra's well, built yeah. for this. You know everything about strategy. I don't know. I wing it half the time. That's better most of the time. I wing it. Look, they'd see me coming. They'd be like, oh, no, she's got to go. Mm -hmm. Sandra, half these people they put on Big Brother, they, they didn't know, none of them even heard of Suri. Like two of them knew who Suri was. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And even the brother didn't even really, um, you know, he didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Zach's brother didn't even, uh, you know, does know everything. Okay. Um, all right. Sandra, thank you for making time to talk to us. We had been really looking forward to this. I hope I gave you guys a lot of insight. As Great to answers. My, my, um, how it was for me in the castle. Yeah. Okay. You know, I can't talk on everyone else, what they knew, what they didn't know. No, um, it was great. Yeah. Oh, oh, I thought you were going to say when we were talking about it, how I had wrote down um, the fans were like, oh, uh, I don't believe Sandra clocked the traders or um, her strategy is awful because she's trying to keep the traders. It's called the traders. And I'm like, these people don't know how to play to get to the end. No, this was good. I, I only had a question when you voted out the traders. I, I didn't I want I wanted to know. Uh, why you went, went with uh, poverty, and I just thought that maybe uh, you couldn't save her at that point. Yeah, at that point, yeah. So, yeah, we talked about that already with her. Um, once once uh, Bergie was gone, it was like, okay, to let her go, especially since so many people wanted her gone, and by then, another day had passed. But had, mm -hmm. had we gone into banishment that night, I'm almost sure Peter would have went home because that's at least where I would have voted. Yeah. And he would have I... never had that conversation with poverty in front of Phaedra, you know, like... All that stuff wouldn't have happened. But uh, moving forward, I did a a, a quiz, um, a, a poll question, and I was like, we need to have a banishment every freaking episode. Like the Amazing Race, now that they stop right. interfering and somebody always goes home, you know? Like, don't interfere. Mm -hmm. Let the players play so there's no doubt that production is not meddling. Don't touch, you know, let us do what we're doing, and that's it. Okay. All right. The great Sandra Diaz. They said I broke the game. They said I broke the game. I didn't break uh, the game. Why did you break the game? Okay, good. Yeah, no, no, you're I, fine. Everybody yeah. will be friends with the traders, and they'll never get voted out. <laughs> yes. No, I just think that the the uh, that the producers think the audience isn't ready to know about that. I mean, if you're just watching the show, like they didn't include that in the show, but I think that that's like an incredible strategy. Good. Yeah. I'm glad I used it, and I'm glad I came up with it. <laughs> yes. Okay, Puya, what's coming up for you? Well, uh, 90 Day Fiance, last season has just finished. I had the two-part tell-all podcast with Sasha Joseph. We had a good time there. Um, this week, I will be talking Australian Survivor Rob. Shannon has invited myself, Chappelle, oh. and Liana um, to talk Australian Survivors. I can't wait to break that Sandra's down. Sandra's old stomping one. grounds. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, um, Sandra, they needed you on the Titans this season. <laughs> their game is seriously harder than ours. Like for oh, real. Yeah. No joke. I mean, it's like twice as long. Their challenges, listen, if you think the missions were hard on the traders, huh? <laughs> yeah. Forget it. They could lose my number unless I'm <laughs> somebody's mentor and not have to do crap. You'll go to the island of the idols again. Yeah, lose my number. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then aside from that, you can find me on Twitter at Puyaism. Find me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Puya. And yeah, Sandra, and just want to say real quick, this is absolutely surreal for me to get to be talking to you, um, you know, face to face like this. And in the future, any trader season you're watching, my doors open. Would love to have you on to break some of these stuff down, no matter what what franchise it is. All right, perfect. Well, thank you guys. Thank okay. you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Don't forget to follow me if you're not following me. I want to see how much your show helps me get more followers. Thank yes. You. Okay. How many I got right now, and how many I'll have by. When is this going up? We're going to put it up tonight. So uh, here's so you get us the get us the count now. And then tonight I'll be live after Survivor. Rick Devins is going to join me to talk about everything that's going on this week in Survivor. Make sure you follow everything we're doing at robiswebsite.com slash okay. subscribe. All right. I'm at 82.1. All right. 82.1. Okay. Let's see if you guys help me get any more. Can we get to 90K? We'll see, oh, Raul. We'll see what juice you have. A hundred K. All right, fine, fine. Sandra drove, you drove a hard bargain. A hundred K. Oh no, I meant like just a hundred followers. Oh, I thought you wanted. I think you hundred K. Rob, you think you got hundred K, Paul? That is yeah, well, a lot. What, what if we say Sandra's not coming back on the podcast until one hundred K? Uh oh. All right, now we're now we're negotiating here. <laughs> okay, well, listen. Oh my God! But really, you can come back anytime you want. We're always <laughs> talking traders. Yeah, no, yes. this is a, lo a long time that uh, I think Sandra. The first time Sandra came on the podcast was right after Heroes versus Villains, fourteen years ago. Fourteen. Incredible. Years. Okay. All right. Well, Sandra, keep going on more shows. We'd love yeah. to see you. Thank you so Thank much for joining us. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.